I usually don't do videos talking about new features, but check this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven new features on this release. And these are not all of them. I spotted many others. Let's see this in action. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna delete this and where is the cutting point? Let's try it again. Okay, the period is the cutting point, but keep in mind that Evernote no titles only support up to 255 characters. To make things easier, let's copy and paste this. See, it was cut here. This was here before, but I don't know if you are aware of it. If you drag a note to a notebook, that note is now in that notebook. You can also drag a note to a tag. Where is the Evernote here? Evernote. And that tag will be added to the note. But now you can do the opposite. All I have to do is drag it here. And now I have the tag there. I see potential for this on situations like my nested tag structure for people, cities. Say I don't remember the name of a person, I can navigate the tag structure, the tree, and then reading the names, I say, oh, this is the person I'm looking for, and I can add that person to a meeting. Watch my other video on this topic, you'll find the link in the description below, and you understand why I do this and how I do it. There's a new keyboard shortcut to open the settings menu. The release note says it is the combination common plus on a Mac. That didn't work, so I went to the shortcuts here and typed settings. And from here we can see it's in fact command comma. If you are a Windows user and the key combination is not working, just do what I did, click the keyboard and check what it is. Since we are here, I found a new addition here when I was going through the options, the note. I have already talked about this in other videos. I'm more comfortable with this option, optimize readability. I may work on a video about this topic. I have already read many scientific, very interesting scientific articles about it, but I digress. Let's go back to what I was talking about. I love the idea of a settings menu with all the settings, but I also like the way Evernote is doing it. All the settings are also next to where we need them. This was already here since the very beginning, and I'm glad they didn't remove this one and they didn't remove any of the settings. The same is true for tasks. We can use the settings here. And of course, you can still access the settings menu from here. And talking about tasks, there's a new filter in tasks. Now you can choose to filter by recurring tasks. Please allow me, I have to take a moment here and agree with Ray when he says that the pace of innovation was worth the move from Evernote Legacy to Evernote 10. What do you think? I, I have to agree with him. By the way, if you want to keep up with everything that is new and also get my tips about Evernote and productivity, I invite you to subscribe to my newsletter. It's a monthly newsletter. I send it every first Thursday and it's free. The link is in the description below. Let's keep moving. This is another one that wasn't on the release notes. On mobile and desktop, we now have new icons for quick actions. Before, you would need to come here to create a task, two clicks, you can do it now. Let's delete this. We can do it now with one click, clicking here. And the same is true for the calendar entry. You now have to click just once. Like I said, it's also available here on your phone or tablet. But to be honest, I didn't like the options here as much as I like them on a desktop because here I have photo, task, and drawing. I don't draw here on the tablet, I do. I would prefer to have here the calendar and task like I have on the desktop. Maybe this should be customizable, maybe we should be able to select our own icons even better. Maybe let us select different icons 
for different Evernote clients. I'll add that to the form. I think you'll like this one. Let's create a new notebook here. I'll call it progress bar. Now let me go to my knowledge base is a good one. Let's first try something here. Let me try to select more than 50 notes. Yeah, that didn't change. We are still limited to 50, but let me show you this. Let's move this to our new progress bar notebook. Pay attention. Check this. I love this. Much, much better than that green circle spinning. Let's go back to the progress bar notebook and move them back to the knowledge base notebook just to see that again. <laughs> this is so cool. I loved it. <laughs> Great. And see how fast it is. Is it just me or you also noticed that it is a little faster now? On top of all that, we now have more real estate on Evernote for tablets. It also works on Evernote for Chromebooks. We can now hide the sidebar just like we do it on the desktop. And there is even this little keyboard to see the shortcuts. And if you pay attention, there are new shortcuts for iOS. I don't know, but it's looking more and more like the desktop version. I would love that. Imagine having a full Evernote experience on the iPad. Wow, that would be great. However, if that's happening, I think it's gonna be a long time. We still don't have basic features. For example, I cannot open two Evernote apps on my iPad. I would love to do that, to have one Evernote for my research, check everything I have in my knowledge base, for example, and the other Evernote window would be a note I'm working on. I have already asked for this a long time ago on the official form. If you wish to upvote my request, you'll find the link below. Meanwhile, there are many other tips that you can learn to become more productive. And remember to subscribe to my monthly free newsletter. See you soon.